Hello everyone, good to have you here. My name is Paul Tranny. I'm a principal evangelist for Adobe, focusing on design, and today, focusing on my favorite app, which is Photoshop. Uh, if it isn't yours yet, it will be by the end of this hour. This is a lab about next level Photoshop skills and productivity. It's gonna be a lot of fun, it's gonna be a whirlwind. Luckily, you do have a workbook, right? So you have access to this workbook. This is a, a lab, so you can get that if you sign up for the session. Um, this is the workbook associated with it. And I'm gonna be clicking through all of this stuff, but I did outline all of these steps for you. Um, also below that, you can see over there, uh, ptrani.me forward slash Paul Tranny, PS. So this is a library, Creative Cloud library where you can get all of these assets, okay? So you'll get the assets, you'll have the workbook, I'm gonna click through the workbook, but you could also just kind of have fun uh, watching, to be honest with you. Uh, and just so you know, it's kind of broken down into three sections. So I'm gonna talk about portraiture and cleaning up uh, skin tones and portraits and things like that. Then we'll get into compositing where we'll spend most of our time, a lot of magic happening there. And then we'll get into sort of book cover design, typography, things like that. So let's go ahead and start. And you can see I'm just sharing my desktop. I'll kind of close this, close this. You can see right in here, um, you can access that um, URL that I explained earlier, but it's the same one that you get on this lab, on the lab page. In the lab description, these are the same files. So again, portrait, comp composition, and then sort of book cover design. So you will go ahead and sync that. So you'll save a copy or follow that library. I encourage you to save a copy. And what that will do is in Photoshop, you'll have access to them right over here. So you'll have that open. Again, this might be named something different, might have the lab name, uh, but these are the files that I'm going to ask, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open and ask, at, at, asset, at, assets, I'm going to at, access. There we go, words. Okay, so uh, I can open up this, but let's talk about sort of um, really optimizing Photoshop, because it's Photoshop's optimized, we can work a lot faster, and that's what I'm going to do uh, right now. So I typically have it set up this way, I have my properties panel, right, that typically gives me all of the options for whatever's selected. But then have your, uh, your panels optimized and squared away with the latest and greatest. So uh, notice I have gradient swatches, shapes, brushes, styles, all that stuff. This is why people don't want to update Photoshop. It's because they don't want to have to export out each one of these, right? Export and then import into the new ver. You take half day trying to get everything set up again. Well, you don't have to worry about that because... Uh, in Photoshop, you can actually sync the presets. So it's under general preferences, preset syncing, get that set up. And hey, while you're at it, hey, make yourself a cup of coffee, maybe a latte, right? Or have some toast. You want some Mariah toast, that's even in there as well. Shift, Option, Command, and then click on those color themes. And uh, that's just a fun Easter egg for you. All right, so let's move on. So what I wanna do actually with this is also trick out these panels, get everything in here. So yours might not look like this. It's because I took everything out of the folders. I don't like them being in folders. Access legacy gradients as well. So go beyond sort of having all these folders, get this set up the way you want, right? Take all these, put them into one folder. The thing is you only have to do this once. You do this once and then it's synced and uh, it's always gonna be set up that way moving forward. So that's what I would do. Do that for all of these, because that's how you get these awesome uh, patterns. Patterns I use oh so much. I use this a lot for shapes. Again, I took everything out of the folders, right? So I could actually see things. So I'll view large thumbnails, and I can see all of those assets right down here. Um, yeah, and then again, load up the default shapes as well. So this is where you can get all the fun new things, including some of these commonly used symbols. So have access to those, do that for all your panels, it'll all be synced up and now we have that all sort of tricked out, if you will, and full of all this good stuff, right? Same thing for brushes. All right, let's talk about setting up your layers panel and really navigating around this file, because this happens to have uh, a total of what, 86 layers. There's a lot going on in here. If I take a peek over here, it's like, 
I can't really tell what's what. Well, I know those are flags. Good job. The only reason I named them is because this is in the it's a lab file. But typically mine aren't named or it might not be this organized. But I really can't tell like what's what. We got a lot of Garths. What the heck is Garth? Right? I can't see it. We want to optimize the layers panel. Click right here, this flyout menu. Go down to the bottom panel options. We'll select that. And right in here. Rather than viewing the entire document, view just the contents, just the layer bounds. So we're going to see what Garth is. Who is Garth? Right? And then I turn off all this stuff. You know what? Don't give me these default masks on fill layers. Don't expand or add a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Turn all that stuff off. Have layer bounds. Turn on. Click OK. Bam. Oh, Garth is a little fishy. Right? There's a little fish. Okay, so navigating and just shortcuts. So this is the short, shortcuts section, just so you know. Um, I'll click on the eyeball. A lot of people do this. Hold down the option key and click on an eyeball, and it will just show what, uh, just reveal just that item. That works for most things like this whale. Oh yeah, that makes sense. For this fish, I still can't see it hardly. Okay, so what you could do is you can hold down the option key and then click on the layer thumbnail. Watch what happens when I do that. Option or alt if you're on PC. Zoom. It goes right to that Garth and that Garth and all these, oops, all these uh, different fish. And let me just kind of open up some of these other folders. Yes, I could see them. They're so easy. And uh, shift clicking on these different fish. You can see some of these are actually behind the uh, whale. So that's the problem with some of these. But we'll click on these and we're jumping right to them. So that's all I'm doing is holding down the option key, bouncing around, maybe uh, clicking on this, maybe this fish, option key, click on the eyeball, and then it just reveals, uh, turns off everything, and you guys get the idea, okay? So that's typically how I bounce around, by the way. When I highlight these, if I don't want this titled pay, I could just call this fish. And then if you hit the tab key, it just jumps down to the next one. Another fish. Again, for renaming, that's awesome. Fishy two, whatever. Right, we want to move that up and down. Command, open and closing brackets. We're moving that up and down this lovely list. Hold down the shift key. Watch what's going to happen. I'll zoom out here. Hold down the shift key. Command, jump it to the top. If it's uh, the closing bracket, moves it to the bottom. Uh, the opening bracket, excuse me. The, yeah, the, 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 I guess the left bracket jumps to the bottom. The right bracket moves it to the top. So that's what's happening, okay? Navigating around as well. We don't always have to use our layers panel, by the way, right? We could use, uh, you know, our, of course, our right up here. Our move tool, right? For our move tool, right? Sometimes we want to click on layers. Sometimes we just want to automatically select uh, these fish. So check this out. And I'll just kind of move this up. I'll zoom in up here. Auto select. Hold down the command key, and that will toggle on auto select. So command key, click, and it selects that layer. So let's watch this work in action. Command key, click. It jumps to that layer, jumps to that layer, jumps to that layer, and I have those uh, smart guides turned on, just so you know, but it's navigating through uh, the layers panel. I could also do a shift select, cl click and drag to select multiple things. Anyways, those are all the shortcuts. Just kind of get you up and moving fast, right? Um, and there's a lot more that I'm going to talk about as well as we move along, but I kind of want to get into this uh, right now, if I could. Um, in fact, that's what I'm doing. I'm navigating around this particular uh, PSD that is located right here. But let's save this as two different types of files. So this is currently just a library asset. We'll do a save as, and we're going to save it to Creative Cloud. And I'll save this as Paul's composition, like that. Okay, saving it to Creative Cloud. The great thing about this is it's always being saved like in the background. Even though it's still on your hard drive, right, it's being saved. So it's always, we're always gonna be able to open it up quickly. So, so that's saving right now. It's kind of behind my, my, my big honking head, uh, but it's saving now and we can jump into our Creative Cloud desktop app. And right over here, files, 
Yeah, we could take a look in here. Your files. There's Paul's composition being synced now. Here's a couple others that I've been working on. So there's this one, composition final, right? We can right click, we can view this on the web, right? We can move it around, we can do all the fun things, but I'm gonna view it on the web. So we'll view it out here and uh, we could see this gorgeous image and yeah, it needs some help, right? Luckily, we have a timeline for it off to the side. So again, I'm viewing version history. I could jump back to an earlier version on a Wednesday, and you can see that one was like a little more muddy. And Friday, uh, hopefully I brightened it up a little bit. But then we could also mark versions, right? We could jump in here and add comments, fix this ladder, it's looking a little flat right there. Boom, that's what I'm referring to. All this stuff is great to view in the browser, but we could also view this inside of Photoshop. So that's what I wanna do now. We'll go to File, uh, Open. Actually, it's already open. What am I even talking about? Here it is, check it out. In fact, right click, review, reveal in web, or on the web. So um, again, it might still be saving, but the short of it is, you could share this with others. Uh, I'm sharing this with Emily, so she's gonna give me some feedback, and then I'll see that actually in Photoshop, right? So in Photoshop, under uh, version history, this is where the version history will come in and the comments will come in right here. Okay, and actually let's do file open. Uh, let's actually just grab this turtle travel one, just a, an, an older version that we can take a look at and you can say, hey, this is looking better. I commented, I usually comment on my own stuff saying, hey, it looks, you're so, you're so cool. You're doing great, doing, doing great, Paul, that sort of thing, right? Comments are actually traveling with the file. Um, and so we also have version history in here. So you can see all these different versions that I can roll back to and click right here and bookmark it and say beginning like so. And there we have that comments and version history. Let's take it to the next level. Okay, so that was cool. Let me show you this. Uh, let's work on this portrait, for instance. And again, it's always kind of embarrassing working on your own image, but uh, you know, at least I know have I know how I have the rights to this. So here's the begin and then the final file for each one of these. We'll open up this portrait. So I have this image, right, of my goofy face. Here's this one, uh, this image as well. So work on whichever one you want. Uh, I've seen better days, I get it, right? But let's go ahead and do some quick cleanup, right? We're gonna go beyond the rubber stamp tool and that sort of thing. Because if you really wanna clean something up, you wanna protect the pixels so you can convert it to a smart object and then use camera raw filter. This is what you're gonna use to clean up um, a photo because what's happening here is overall I have a lot of texture to my face and I want to kind of smooth it out right over here texture let's take that down a little bit right watch what happens when I take that down let me zoom out a touch it starts smoothing out my skin right so we could see the before and the after right so again usually people take this too far right no looks so fake and people will take the clarity down Clarity is gonna start blurring out a lot of those details around the eyes. So I typically don't mess with clarity. I just work on removing and smoothing out the texture. So that's gonna smooth out the texture, but keep the details, okay? So from there, yes, you could brighten it up, all that good stuff, you know, increase the exposure, things like that. I'm noticing what I need to do is just kind of get rid of some of these spots right up here. So any, any sort of blemish or maybe a highlight from a light that's not working too well, use this as opposed to the content aware tools inside of Photoshop, spot removal. I'll click right there. It's gonna sample from right here. And guess what? I can start to move that around. And it doesn't have to be a, br um, a dot. It could be any sort of brush size. But the fact that you have this sort of control makes this even more beneficial when you're doing any sort of cleanup. Again, just kind of moving those around, you could see how that looks, okay? Um, yeah, so I absolutely love, I basically use um, Camera Raw filters for doing any of my, uh, my cleanup, just so you know. I might increase the exposure a little bit to brighten up the eyes and use a brush just to brighten them up. 
because again, your eyes get a little dark. It gets to be like too much shadow in there. And all I did is just kind of high or highlight my eyes, as you can tell, like so. And that's all I need to do. Click OK. Right. We did just some simple cleanup from start to finish. We're not going to change anything too crazy, but uh, yeah, that's what I would typically do. Also with this, you ready for this? I, I must have been halfway through a blink. This eye looks a little off. It's a little odd. Hey, that's okay. Use this sparingly, but we have liquify. So we can go and use liquify and it's aware of the faces. Even if there was like five faces in here, it would recognize all of them. But we could use the face tool to kind of jump over here and say, hey, you know what? Let's just increase that eye just a touch to make it the same size as the other eye. Right, and we can jump in and say, hey, you know, this is like winter time, Paul. This is summertime, Paul. Right, this is like put on a winter coat. This is me in the summertime. All right, uh, but you can see what it could do. It's like pretty amazing. We'll get that back to that where it was. Click OK. You get the idea. Okay, so non destructive, non destructive. I love it. Right, cool. Um, uh, lastly, real fast, let's just add a layer. If you are going to use these, sort of content aware tools, spot healing brush tools, stuff like that. You could use them, but use them on a new layer. So put them on a layer above the other layers and then just do a sample all layers, okay? So from here, also, this is another pro tip. So many pro tips. Darken, yeah, we could take this spot. Let's just kind of paint over this. It actually darkens or removes the shine in this case. Uh, when it's set to darken. So kind of darken all those crazy highlights that you have, Paul. Like, can you fix that? And again, use that sparingly. That one didn't work out too well. Just go like nice and soft and we can get rid of some of that shine right up here because we're just making those pixels darker uh, using that. So now that's on its own layer. We have our before, we have our after, okay? Super cool, right? From there, if you want to do anything destructive, I would use dodge and burn on the eyes. I would use I would use the sponge filter to desaturate any red in the eyes, just so you know. Okay, so, and again, that's in the workbook. Uh, and again, we've removed spots, we've smoothed the skin, we've reshaped the face, and uh, I would say everything looks pretty good. From there, yeah, save your file. You could also open up the final as well and compare it uh, if you have access to these files, the portrait final. This is how this one ended up. And even in here, I think I did a maybe, yeah, that's within this, within this smart object, that's actually where I uh, removed the shine, just so you know. So, okay, cool. Uh, let's move on to this composition. We're gonna have some fun now. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying Max. Uh, let's talk about like, just really quickly, sky replacement, right? So we have this sky replacement under edit, right? It's already replaced that sky. We already have something much more amazing uh, than I did before, right? But sometimes it'll default to these blue skies. What I wanted to show you, because we introduced sky replacement last year, is this right over here, get more skies. And right in here, download free skies. So let's go beyond the 20 that you get within Photoshop, right? Because we actually, they live on your hard drive, right? We don't want to load your hard drive with 200 high res images. We want you to have the ability to jump out and say, hey, you know what? Let's download the spectacular sky pack, which is what I'm doing. So again, free assets ready for you. So that's downloading. We'll go back out here, we'll click da -da, to get more skies, right? And we'll import uh, presets, right? You could also import up to 5,000 of your own images if you wanted to as well. There's spectacular sky pack, boom. Let's see how spectacular, oh, there we are. Okay, 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 okay. I like the ones that have like multiple colors uh, and I could still kind of move these around but I like that one let's try this one this one's kind of fun cool thing is is I could always change it later as well but let's just output that as new layers there we have it boom and boom all right so easy enough 
Um, yeah, we'll just leave that as is. We need to work on this composite some more. I have this lovely turtle, and I want to create this cool com composition where this turtle's in the sky. Easiest way to remove an object, right? Remove the background. Remove an object from out of the background. Select that layer. Go into the Properties panel. Check this out. Under Quick Actions, Remove Background. Click right there. Bam! Does it. Done, right? It not only does a select subject, but also adds that layer mask. So, again, I think that's pretty awesome, okay? Gets a little bit more tricky with something like this. We have all these fish, right? Do we want to do a remove backgrounds? Not quite gonna work. That's why I want to introduce you to this, uh, the object selection tool. And what's happening now is it's automatically, this is brand new, it's analyzing this image and will find uh, the various fish in here. So check this out. As I roll over, it's like, yeah, I want this fish, click, yeah. Shift, click, 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 click. Grab all the fish that you want for our lovely scene just by clicking around and we're adding to that selection by holding down the shift key, okay? So we'll just grab some of these fish like so. Let's grab this one, maybe this one. It's probably not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. And there we have it, layer mask done. Right, and again, I could do more cleanup in here. Obviously, I need to do cleanup right there. But the fact that this automatically finds objects, this is what it does. Object finder right up here. If you wanna change the specifics of all this, the highlight, right, you can go ahead and do that right up here. So again, super easy. Uh, there's also a hard edge that you could select. Uh, kinda didn't need that, just so you know. And um, you get the idea, right? Cool. So that's done. We can make that a smart object. Sorry, I did that so fast. But this is, um, you know, these are pro tips, by the way. Convert to smart object, right? That's what we do. Take that, kind of shrink it down. I get it. I'll clean it up later. But right now, we're just kind of getting the com com composite squared away, uh, like so. All right, so we went through object select tool enhancements is what's, what that is called, just so you know. Um, let's take a look at this castle. Mm, interesting. So this castle would be fun to put on the back of the turtle. Okay, so let's just do a remove background. That's always where I start, just because it's easy, right? It's like, boom, done, right? I could always add more to this using maybe the quick selection tool if I wanna grab some more of those bushes and, uh, you know, f fill with the you option delete will do a fill with the foreground color and I can add those bushes back there. Uh, but yeah, that's set up. Let's convert this to a smart object. Let's put it on the back of this turtle. Boom, boom. Let's take a look at manipulating graphics. So right in here, edit, transform. This is what I do. I don't even go this long. This is too long of a, of a way to get there. Uh, what I do, and let's turn off these fish, is I do a Command T and then I do a right click, and here are all your options for manipulating or transforming this. So that's how an easy way to get to warp. Oh, there we are in warp. And you can grab these Bezier points like we know we have, uh, we've done before, or you can actually grab the image itself. A lot of times I'm just grabbing the image itself and pushing it into place like that, because we kind of want it to follow the curve of the turtle shell, but we don't want a whole lot of distortion with the, the building angles. Um, but I would end up doing something kind of like that, right? It's just, you know, we could go beyond sort of these um, divisions and we can split it up some more if we want to as well. So clicking, we've split it up more horizontally, more vertically, and you can see this mess I made, okay? Now, why did I make this a smart object? Because it says smart, and I like selecting things that say smart. <laughs> but more importantly, if I decide I want to go back in there, go into warp, oh, all those Bezier points are still there, and uh, I can manipulate it some more. So that's typically what I do. Since it's a smart object, it is my friend. And I'm going to shrink that up, make it a little smaller like that. And uh, I still need to do a lot more blending, which I could do as well okay all right 
So, and actually, you know what? Since it's a smart object, if you ever want to apply two masks to something, make it a smart object, then you can apply another layer mask to that smart object. And then again, I'm just kind of brushing out some of this and blending it in. There we go. Something like that. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have the turtle uh, in place. We have uh, this castle, but the colors are way off. So how can we match the color? Let's do this. I wanna match the color of the turtle with the color of the background. So let's take both of these. Let's convert them to a smart object. Okay, so for these two layers, I'm gonna select the turtle layer. I'm gonna to go to image adjustments, right down here, match color, right? And just do what it says. Right in here, it says, hey, you know what, what's your source? Well, it's gonna be my current file, and I wanna match the, the background, which is this sky replacement group. Boom, it automatically matches it, okay? We could play with illuminance. I might crank it up a little bit or down the intensity, but play with these all you want, right? It's, it's, a, it's a fine balancing act, uh, but I'll just increase the illuminance a little bit. The nice thing is, is I'm actually going to uh, remove this brightness underneath. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So again, match color does it. Match color is destructive, meaning those I can't bring back those original colors unless I made a copy of that layer. Um, so uh, there is that. Okay, now, how would you make this darker, right? Um, I see a lot of people painting, uh, you know, shadows or darkness with a paintbrush and using black. You don't really want to do that. You actually want to use an adjustment layer, right? Uh, let's go to hue and saturation. Boom, there we are. Selected hue and saturation, here it is, as you can tell. Uh, we'll take the saturation down, and really what I'm focusing on is I'm focusing on uh, this part of the shell, and we'll create a clipping mask. Right-click, create clipping mask, right? Or just hold down the option key and click right there. So much easier. Okay, so now we have that in place. We want to do it inverse of this. Command I, inverted. Now, this is where we get to what I was talking about, painting. Now we can paint with white. Hit X key to flip these two. Paint with white, and that's basically gonna darken this part of the shell, right? And we could increase the flow if we want to. In fact, let's crank this up to 100%. Opacity and flow are at 100%, and I'm just kind of removing this. Uh, or technically, I'm adding to that um, adjustment layer, revealing that adjustment layer just under here, right? Some of these, I might actually adjust the opacity because that's looking really dark, uh, but you get the idea. So we're painting, not with black, but we're painting with an adjustment layer, okay? There we are, it looks much better, okay? So we could say before, after, before, after. Looks great. All right, we could also use curves to change the brightness and color. So let's take a look at this. The, the color change I did earlier using match color was destructive. Here's a non-destructive way to uh, match color. We'll do it with the castle. In fact, we'll do a curves adjustment layer. We'll clip it. We'll click on this layer mask. And then let's go in here to the properties. This is my curve, right? And I could play with this all day long. It's like, okay, this kind of needs to be brighter. Do I change the red? Do I need to have less red or more red? And it's a guessing game. So let's undo that. And let's go to this. I usually hold down the option key and click on auto. Boom, click on auto. That's gonna bring up these auto color correction options. So you can come in here. And again, I already kind of mess with this. This is where you get to define the shadows, right? I've changed this to enhance per channel contrast or fine dark and light colors, right? I toggle between those two, just so you know. Play with them as you will. Uh, the midtones, right? So the midtones probably need to be a little bit more brown. And then the highlights, pick the highlight from the scene. So you're, it's not gonna be a guessing game anymore 
uh, when you're trying to match the color of something. You literally define the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights in this case, which is what I'm doing. So we'll kind of click around, we can see that change. We'll change this to find dark and light colors. I'm trying to get this to change drastically. And uh, it's, not, it's not changing that drastically, just to be honest with you. Let's get that mid-tone shadows could choose to be a lot darker. And uh, anyways, so that's what I wanted to show you. A simple way, you, it's very subtle in this case, but typically anytime you need to make drastic changes, this helps out a lot. So it changed all these color channels, and then I can still change the overall brightness and contrast as well, okay? So again, just trying to dial that in, and it definitely needs to be brighter. I'd go with something like that, and there you have it. Cool. All right. I'm going to show you something that, to be honest with you, I just learned, and it's absolutely amazing, okay? Very helpful. Here I have, you know, I have the turtle, I have the castle right here, okay? And um, let's just say I want to brighten up everything, okay? So I'm going to select all these layers, like I want to brighten up this whole, the turtle and the castle all together. So I'll select everything and I'll do command G, which is grouping the layers. Boom. There we go. And now let's say for all of this, I want to brighten it up. So I might go out here. I might do, um, or brighten it up or change the color a little bit. So let's just do hue and saturation. Right, we'll just crank this up just so you could see it change everything. I'm like, no, I want it to just change the um, everything in the turtle layer. So you could do this. You could bring it outside of that current layer and you can add a clipping mask to that turtle um, uh, layer group. And that does, that does the trick. That's one way of doing things. But oftentimes you might end up with multiples of this. You'll then add uh, like curves that will be an adjustment layer and you'll you know drop that in there and do all that stuff. And it just gets kind of messy. I'm gonna show you personally a better way of doing things is making everything more self-contained. Cause I could put everything inside of this turtle folder. Notice how these are affecting everything, okay? But I just want to affect the turtle, just affect the contents inside of this folder. What do you have to do? You select this turtle layer. Don't have all those effects pass through everything. Just say, hey, you know what? Make it normal. And you can see it change from everything to just this layer group. Everything to just this layer group. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to worry about clipping mask or any of that. And uh, you can make those changes. Uh, further if you want to, and I get it. I made this look a little bit too red. <laughs> but just like that, I'm just giving a little a little bit of pop, if you could tell, to that content. And I thought that was pretty clever. Just change that to layer, that layer group, and it will just affect uh, those that layer content. All right, cool, cool. Let's move on to something brand, brand, brand spanking new. What we're gonna do in here to this new background. Okay, this is a new background. So I, I like this background, but really it could use some more pop. This is a fantasy scene and I want to just really have some maybe lush greenery or just change it more drastically. So check this out, I absolutely love this. We'll select that layer, we'll go to filter and go to neural filters, okay? Selecting neural filters right over here. We have these lovely beta filters, download them by the way. Download all of them, right? Still a couple more I need to download, but this is the one I want to reference, a landscape mixer. Download it, right? And then what you want to do is you want to turn it on, and this is what you do is you literally select a scene, say, hey, you know, I decided I want this to be a snowy scene. We can select that thumbnail. It'll go through, and this is Adobe Sensei, intelligently knowing what s snowy scenes look like 
analyzing this image and saying, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put snow in this image. Bam, there it is. All this snow uh, or all that content from that image on this image that I'm working on, which is pretty amazing, right? That's the drastic one I wanted to do, show you snow just because I think it's cool. Uh, chances are you again, I just wanted something maybe a little bit more lush and green like this. So this one gives it the color, so it steals the color, right? And the landscape from this photo and applies it to mine. And also you can see all these sliders down here that you can play with all day long. But tell me that's not amazing. Should I just pause and wait for applause? Cause that's just super cool, okay? We'll output this as a smart filter. We could always change this later, but in general, we'll just click okay. And now we have just like, just a better overall scene in this case, even though he's looking a little bit green, isn't he? Boy, oh boy. All right, this is looking a little green. I could, uh, again, just tweak that a little. Let's just do that. Okay, cool. Uh, in fact, I could do, I can add some harmonization to this as well. I could technically run this whole folder. Let's do this, convert this to a smart object. The turtle is now a smart object. Now we could run some neural filters on it as well, right? So we could run that same uh, landscape mixer if we wanted to, but I'm gonna select harmonization, right? We'll turn this on. So you do need a reference image, but yeah, I wanna have some harmonization with the background. There we are, clicking right there, analyzing that background image and then applying it to this just like that. I hardly have to mess with anything, but it's just creates some more, more harmonious um, color combos. Um, and then I can tweak them further if I want to. I might make it a little bit brighter just so we can actually see it. And also since it's the foreground image, I want it to kind of have a little bit more pop. But there we are. Oh, you know what I did? I accidentally did that as a new, yeah, neural filters. There we are, double click. Let's double check. Output as a smart filter. Harmonization. Here we go. Change this. Sorry about that. I, I realized that it was, it needs to be sent to set to smart filter. And then again, just going through that process. Not new layer. All right, there we are. Click done. You get the idea. Right, so far so good. Neural filters are your new best friend, right? Um, just to kind of finish this up, we would uh, just kind of have uh, or add some some more elements to this is what I would do. It's like, okay, well, let's drop in a flag, right? You can add some flags to this. You know, since this is a lab, if you wanna play with this some more and add some flags, add some fishies, you could do that as well, right? Uh, notice, if I wanted to add a lot of these fish, if you hold down the option key and click and drag, it will duplicate it and add more that way, right? And by the way, let's just go ahead and turn off the smart guides. That's what was going on there. So clicking, adding all these fun fish. Cool, there they are, take them all group them in a folder and you get the idea, right? That's how I ended up with this version. So feel free to grab that stuff. Feel free to open up this final composition and everything I've just shown um, is actually in here as well. Um, I did this HDR toning uh, layer just so you know. And then again, this is, this is just a Paul tip, right? I'll, I'll go through when a design needs to be finalized. I'll use, um, I'll do a couple things. Like if I want to add like a dodge and burn, check this out. Hold down the option key, click on create a new layer to bring this up and then change this to right down here to soft light. And right in here, we're gonna, we're, we want a soft light layer, but we want to fill it with 50% gray. Okay, so that's what I did. You'll see nothing will change, but it does create this soft light layer and then I can paint with it. I can paint with black to burn, right? So we could burn a little bit more. I know this is drastic. Paint with white to dodge, and that's what's happening. Again, I have the flow set up all the way, but I'm basically doing dodging and burning by painting with uh, black and white on that 
new layer. And that's how I ended up with this soft light dodge and burn. That's what that means. Lastly, really fast, since I only have like, I don't have much time, I'll do a copy merge. I'll do a new, a new layer. I will do adjustments and I'll do HDR toning. HDR toning will flatten the image, which is why I pasted it into a new file. And then right in here, I'll crank this up to RC5 or photorealistic or something with like a lot of punch. And I'm like, oh, let's just see how that looks, you know? Or the Scott 5 I like a lot, right? And I can tweak that some more. But that's what I would add just to try it out. It's just a quick way to give it some punch. Uh, and then I'll either change the opacity. And look at that, look at that for beginning to end, it just gives it that pop that I want. And that's HDR toning. So that's what's meant by that layer. Okay, cool. You get the idea. Let's move on. Um, Cause again, this is, this is roughly the final looks something like this. So feel free, pick that apart, check out all those. And let's move on to this book cover now, if I could. And let's close these other files. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about typography. Hopefully everybody's still kind of following along in their lovely little, maybe you're following along in your workbook, just so you know, but we'll kind of jump down here, book cover design, talk about Adobe fonts, right, and graphics and uh, things like that. So here I am. So let's, let's talk about this first off really fast. Um, it will, uh, there, here's some fonts and probably when you open to this file, it will automatically sync these fonts to your desktop since they are Adobe fonts. So Lust Script is an Adobe font. You probably didn't have it, but it automatically syncs. Uh, also in Photoshop on the iPad as well. So Lust Script syncs, Script syncs, and then so does Contiki as well. Okay, so let's have some fun with this uh, Omega. Right, I wanna play with this and I wanna just kinda of highlight alternate glyphs. If I select this G, you're gonna get alternate glyphs that you could then select, right? We could extend that out, we can go down to the O, we can have more of a curly O right there and we can do some more with uh, this text right in here. Let's select this X, let's have that extend down more, right? And just kinda of play with this, right? Just I'm just kind of making this uh, look a little fun. You know, there we are, vortex because we have these alternate glyphs that come up, right? There are alternate glyphs that you can select. You can see them all in the glyphs panel, but you could also do this. You can take a whole line right down here and say, hey, for this whole promo line, select that layer. I want all of the alternate glyphs to be um, displayed. So let's open up the glyphs panel just so you can kind of see some of this stuff. Glyphs. You know, here's a ton of alternate glyphs right in here, right? And they're all combos, so they're kind of hard to find. But all I need to do is uh, go to that layer and then in your properties panel for type options, right, this little button right here, the stylistic alternates, click right there. And it gives me all these fun stylistic alternates for each one of these, which is really cool. And I can always swap it out as well. But I'm just like really into that. With one click, I'm, I've swapped out everything and just made it for a more interesting line. I also want to point out that this is brand new as well. We have additional options and features for East Asian languages, East Asian type, and Middle Eastern features. So obviously paragraph, spacing, and other options as well. So we've really spent a lot of time on East Asian, Middle Eastern, and more. So anyways. Super cool. You get the idea there. I love using alternate glyphs. I love the Contiki is my new favorite font. And uh, I like just kind of cleaning this up. So let's clean this up a little bit more, by the way. Pro tips as well. I want to add um, an effect to this layer, right? So this drop shadow. You could move this. Did you know you could just click and drag and move it? Did you know you could do that? Just click and drag and move it but really I wanna copy it. You can hold the option key, click and drag, and it copies to that vortex. And now we have both of them with a shadow, as you can see, okay? We have a little bit of a problem though, because look, like this, 
this shadow is kind of overlapping that text. I might not want that. It's very subtle, but I'm not crazy about it, okay? What you can do there, put that in a folder, right? You know, we don't need this one. Let's just drag it to the trash. But let's take this drop shadow, click and drag it up to the whole title. And bam, it means that everything in that title group now has a drop shadow, right? So that's what it does. It gives everything a punch and then that text can kind of melt together rather than like conflicting with one another. Okay, so anyways, for what it's worth, I find that helpful, all right? So we have that, that looks pretty good. Just kind of showing you some layer styles, right? We can get into um, even some shape styles, if you will, and using vector shapes. I'm gonna do this really fast, jump over here. Uh, we have the custom shape tool. Remember, I actually tweaked out and, and tricked out my uh, shapes panel, so they're all in here when I select the custom shape tool. That's where they all came from. Zoop. Boom, and guess what? Yeah, legacy default shapes are down there as well. So that's all that stuff. But I wanted to just kind of jump in and add like a, something behind this, over 30 possible endings. This is a choose your own adventure style book. So I'll click and drag, right? And even before you do that, just make sure this is set to shape, right? Uh, we'll change the fill to, I don't know, red or yellow or something. Let's drag that underneath. Maybe we'll change this to orange, right? And uh, maybe we'll eliminate the stroke. But this is such an odd shape isn't it? Like this polygon, I'm not impressed, right? Let's move it over. Now, let's take a look at our properties panel because these are all customizable shapes. So these are enhanced custom shapes. I wanna give it more points. Sure enough, take that, drag it up as high as you want, up to 100 points if you want to. Still is not that cool, but right in here, we wanna adjust this and make it a star. So right here, we could set the star ratio. We take this down, and now all of a sudden we have those points. We could have a burst if we want to, but really we wanna make this just a nice badge. Boom, there we are. Because again, what do clients want? They want to make it pop, basically. Uh, if we decide we want to make a coupon sort of look, we have that dashed line. You get the idea, right? We have that coupon style. We don't need to import that in from Illustrator. We just add it right in here, which I think is super cool. And by the way, if we wanted to even soften those edges, we just go ahead and rotate the curvature of that, and that's done. So those are your um, sort of enhanced custom shapes for this, which is pretty awesome, right? And that works for a number of your tools. The line is an actual line. The line is no longer, this line used to be a rectangle with the fill. Now it's an actual line that you can control the thickness for. Uh, so yeah, like, yes, about time. I mean, that was updated about a year ago or so. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's take a look at this some more. Let's, let's jump into rendering effects and I wanna talk about gradients and a number of things. Let's just do this really fast. Let's just grab a circle, hey, why not? We'll grab an ellipse, we'll make a new layer. We're gonna change this from shape to path. We're gonna draw out a circle like so. And uh, we're gonna have fun with this circle. In fact, we're gonna render something around this circle. Since we're talking about the Omega Vortex, this young adult choose your own adventure novel, right? Um, we'll go down to render, we'll render flame. And just to show you what you could do in here. Don't worry about this message, just click okay. It says, hey, it's pretty big. It will, um, it may not look like that to you, by the way, it might be like this, but here we can take a flame and I'm just encourage you to like play with some of these procedural or um, sort of um, rendered items. I could change this to one flame along a path, right? And as I sort of play with the width, you can see it obviously change. And right down here, we can change the quality to high just to get a higher quality render when we're ready for it, okay? So one flame along a path, we can change the width, adjust that slider. Uh, you can also do multiple path directed, ready for this, multiple flames, and then we will uh, change the length. That's what we wanna do. Take this down and change the length, right? And now we get that like 
sort of warp speed type look. Um, but anyways, that's all I wanted to do, something like that. You can change the color now um, if you want to, right in here, you can just shift the color, but I'll just click okay, and then there's our lovely, our lovely little burst. Okay, let's talk about gradients now. So that was just for fun, by the way. Uh, gradients have been updated. I'm so excited about this, uh, knowing that if anybody you know me, I play a lot with gradients. So let's open up our gradients panel. So I have all these cool gradients, but actually let's just go ahead and draw right up here. Because er since I added them to my gradients panel, they're all right in here as well. So let's pick a fun, fun one like blue through these different color cycles, click and drag. But this is the new setting that we have. So I should have just changed this to classic. This is classic, right? Um, and it does an okay, it does a, uh, you know, I used to think it did a pretty good job till you get into these different methods of like perceptual. So when I change this to perceptual on a new layer, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to get the angle just right, but it's going to give you more color variations and a smoother gradient if you have this change to perceptual. So you'll see that in a number of places, it basically says, hey, you know what, we've changed all these gradients to work better, just so you know. So if I do decide to even use a gradient for a gradient map, uh, grab that same one, why not? Right, there we are. And you can see right in here, perceptual, right? That's changed to perceptual and it's changing everything. And uh, from there, I can start to tweak this some more, but at least there's the beginning of my okay uh, young adult novel, right, just for fun. So yeah, maybe I even want to put this on top. That makes everything change. And you can see how things can digress pretty quickly. Okay, cool, cool. Let's take that out like that. Feel free to save that. Feel free to open up this last one right here and you'll see a lot of those same sort of tips and tricks. Uh, I also wanna kinda get into the iPad as well, so let me kind of switch over to it because I can actually work on this stuff on the iPad. So let's, let's take a look right now. All right, so here I am in Photoshop on the iPad, as you can see. So we can check out all these new features. Camera raw editing, smart objects, dodge and burn, magic wand, canvas projection, right? We could open up any one of the files that I was already working on, but let's just go ahead and rather than even reading from that list, uh, we'll jump out here and we'll just grab a photo. So this is actually a raw file, uh, a DNG, and sure enough, yeah, camera raw editing right in here. Let's just click auto, bam, brighten it up. And again, we can increase the exposure, add some effects, adjust the temperature. You get the idea. You know how all this works, right? We can make those sort of global edits. But let's just go ahead and import that as a layer, right? Easy enough using those raw files, right? And um, there we are. Bring it in like so. We can see that's on its own little layer off to the side. And we can start to brighten up areas because also what's added in here is dodge and burn. So we can select, say, dodge, for instance. And again, that's gonna brighten up, say, these tree trunks. And again, maybe I'll bring down, bring down the size. I could bring down or bring up the exposure, but it's pretty high just so you can see it. But again, just brightening up all those tree trunks exactly as expected. And I could do that with the ground as well. All right, so you see what that does. Burn, do that in the sky, bring back some of that blue or whatever, right? Just so it's not so washed out, right? That's what we can do. All right, let's take a look off to the side. Notice we can actually, um, let's actually make a new empty group. Inside of here, we can go ahead and bring in a file from our library. Extras, let's just grab this fish. There's our lovely little fish right here, right? Click done. Let's put them inside of that layer group, like so. And uh, this is cool. I like this touch modifier. So watch this. I can uh, tap and then drag it to the outside, and that says up there in the upper right, duplicate. All right, it's going to go ahead and duplicate that that image, right? And I'm making all these fish, right? I could actually undo that as well. You can see how that works, do that real fast. Because before I do that, I actually want to convert it to a smart object. Bam, convert it to the smart object. Look at how it's changed that icon ever so slightly, just so you know. And again, we can go through that process, duplicating this smart object like so, 
there we have a bunch of fish. And uh, since it's a smart object, right, we can go ahead and resize it and, you know, size it down, size it up, and we don't have to worry about, like, destroying those pixels, right? So this one we'll take, and this one maybe shrink it down like I'm doing right now. Just making a school of fish, right? And there they are, right? Let's take this to the next level, because this is what I'm thinking. Uh, I want to show you right in here. We've added this recently as well. Do a long press. Magic wand. There we go. Just set to 32 like it usually is by default. Let's undo that. But I do actually want to tap on uh, just this tree like so. So I'm grabbing all that. In fact, adding to it, by the way. So let's deselect. Let's tap once that actually did a pretty good job but we could also add to it and so i'm tapping a little bit more and it's grabbing more of those pixels right that's basically what's happening and let's go ahead and convert that to a layer mask bam converted that to a layer mask and then let's just go ahead and um, invert it really fast off to the side invert there we go and i was just trying to make it look like those fish are in the trees, right? That was the goal. And I can always take any one of these outside of that layer group and uh, you get the idea. This one's kind of swimming that way. So again, the start of a fun composition, all done very easily in Photoshop on the iPad. I could share this with others, by the way. So uh, publish and export, obviously live streaming. Uh, I could share this with others, right? So we can collaborate together. Uh, there's also built-in commenting. So I could share this with the client. I would see the comments within uh, Photoshop on the iPad, which is great, just like on the desktop. You get the idea. It is a lot of fun uh, working on the iPad. So I encourage you to check that out. And uh, that's being synced in the background and you get the idea. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that is it for me and Next Level Photoshop Skills and Productivity. Uh, it's the name of this lab. My name is still Paul Tranny, and I'm just thankful you guys are hanging out with me today. So feel free to keep the conversation going uh, in chat, on social media. Uh, and uh, I'm live streaming every Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time on uh, behance.net forward slash live. So join me every Friday for a Photoshop masterclass. Otherwise, hopefully you're enjoying Max. And again, thank you so much for watching.